This is a Rogue Media Network podcast. Hey guys, it's Mike. Sorry, we've been out of sorts lately. It's been kind of crazy. I flew to Florida for a podcast conference, then came back and drove to San Antonio. Then we drove over to Houston to judge a network podcast competition. We got back and now Rusty is sick. We will get going again, but until then, enjoy these brand new King of the Hill fan fiction stories. It was a sunny, ordinary day in Arlen, Texas, and Bill found himself standing in line at the Department of Motor Vehicles, a place that most people dreaded visiting. The scent of stale coffee and paperwork filled the air, but Bill had a different concern on his mind. He was there to renew his driver's license, a task he had been putting off for far too long. Dale had accompanied him to the DMV. Dale had a hidden agenda as usual. He believed that the government was corrupt and wanted to prove it by pretending to be blind and taking the driver's test, Dale had donned a pair of sunglasses and was carrying around a white cane as a prop. As Bill approached the eye test section, he could feel his heart pounding. He took a deep breath and approached the counter where the DMV employee handed him a sheet of paper with letters of varying sizes. Please read the letters aloud from the top line down, the employee instructed. Bill squinted at the paper and began to recite the letters hesitantly. But as he did, he couldn't help but think of his ex-wife, Lenore. Her memory had haunted him for years. And in that moment, all he could remember were her words about his puppy dog eyes. Lenore had once told him that she loved those eyes, that they were what had drawn her to him in the first place. But Lenore had left him, and those puppy dog eyes had shed many tears since. Bill's voice quivered, and he stumbled over the letters. The DMV employee gave him a stern look and said, Sir, please read the letters clearly. Dale, still pretending to be blind, sat nearby, overhearing Bill's struggle. He muttered to himself, they can't fool me. This eye test is just a way for the government to control us. Bill's eyes welled up with tears as he continued to struggle with the eye test. He felt like a failure, not just in this moment, but in life. His divorce had left him broken, and it seemed like he couldn't even pass a simple eye test. Just then, Hank and Boomhauer walked in, having completed their own tasks at the DMV. Hank noticed Bill's distress and approached him. Bill, what's going on here? Why are you upset? Hank asked, his voice filled with concern. Bill sniffled and wiped his eyes. Hank, I can't pass this eye test. I'm a failure, just like my marriage. Hank put a comforting hand on Bill's shoulder. Bill, you're not a failure. You're a good man, and the neighborhood needs you to be able to drive. Think about what everyone would say if you couldn't help out in a crisis or drive Bobby around. Bill nodded, feeling slightly reassured by Hank's words. You're right, Hank. I can't let Lenore's memory hold me back. Meanwhile, Dale continued to pretend to be blind, making exaggerated gestures with his white cane. Boomhauer watched with amusement, but Hank whispered to him, Boomhauer, let's get Dale out of here. He's causing a scene. Together, they managed to coax Dale away from the counter. As they left the DMV, Dale muttered, I'll expose their corrupt system one day, you'll see. Back at the counter, Bill took a deep breath, wiped away his tears, and decided to give the eye test another try. This time, he focused on the letters and cleared his throat. P, the letter F. P, T, O, Z. The air was thick. 
with anticipation. The DMV employee smiled and nodded. That's perfect. You've passed the test, Mr. Dotrieve. Bill beamed with relief and gratitude. He thanked the employee and turned to Hank, who was still by his side. Hank, you're right. I can't let the past hold me back. I've got a duty to my neighborhood, and I won't let him down. Hank patted Bill on the back, and together they walked out of the DMV, leaving Dale's conspiracy theories behind. Bill may have faced a moment of weakness, but with the support of his friends and his determination to move forward, he was ready to face the road ahead with renewed confidence in his puppy dog eyes. After leaving the DMV, Bill and Hank got into Bill's old car. Bill was at the wheel, a sense of pride and accomplishment returning to him after passing the eye test. As they pulled out of the parking lot, Bill couldn't help but smile. No, Hank, I forgot how much I love to drive, Bill said, gripping the steering wheel with both hands. It's therapeutic, you know, clears my head. I hardly ever think of Lenore when I'm driving. He silently turned his head and wiped away a single tear while his lip quivered. Hank nodded in agreement. I understand that, Bill. Driving can be a great way to relax and catch up with your thoughts. Take my old propane route. I remember driving through the open spaces of East Texas with a truck full of the noblest of gases and a heart full of pride. I drive and drive while thinking of new ways to talk about that magnificent and regal lady propane. Bill continued. You remember old Mrs. Putnam, don't ya? She lives a few blocks away. I've been driving her to the grocery store every week. She sure can talk. She tells me all about that cat of hers. He's a rascal. Hank chuckled. Yeah, I've had a few chats with Mrs. Putnam myself. She's quite the character, all right. And that cat of hers is pure evil. Bill said, yeah, he does scratch and bite me a lot. I figure it's the cost of friendship. As they drove, Bill regaled Hank with stories of his trips with Mrs. Putnam and her mischievous cat. It was clear that Bill cherished those moments and the chance to lend a helping hand to his elderly neighbor. Meanwhile, Boomhauer was at the wheel of his car, driving Dale back to his house. Dale still had on his, his fake blind man glasses and was feeling triumphant about his plan to expose the government's corruption. He smirked at Boomhauer. Well, Boomhauer, I think I really showed him at the DMV today. Boomhauer responded with his signature mumble. Yeah, man, that dang old lady didn't know to dang old think, but dang old making fun of dang old blind folks is bad, dang old real bad, dang old know what I mean. Which Dale interpreted as agreement. As they approached Dale's house, he finally took off his blind glasses. The sun suddenly emerged from behind a cloud, shining directly into the car and straight into Dale's eyes. Dale's the blinding light made Dale squint and shield his eyes. Panic washed over him, and he frantically groped around for his glasses. Oh no, I can't see. I can't see. They've finally gotten me. The government has made me blind. Curse this inquisitive and brilliant mind of mine. A Dale exclaimed in a panic, mistakenly believing that he had lost his sight due to the blinding sun. Boomhauer, struggling to hold back laughter, pulled the car over and reached for Dale's glasses, handing them to him. Dale quickly put them back on, but his heart was still pounding. I thought I'd gone blind, boom, however. That son was like a government conspiracy trying to take away my vision. Thank God you were here. They don't want witnesses. Dale let out a sigh of relief, his face turning from sheer panic to embarrassment. Well, I guess I got a little too close to the truth there, but I won't let them catch me off guard next time. I'll train my eyes so hard it'll be impossible to make me blind. As they continued their drive, Boomhauer kept chuckling at Dale. Meanwhile, Bill and Hank enjoyed their ride home, with Bill appreciating the simple joy of riding with his friend. We matanye. We matanye, indeed. <laughs> This has been a Rogue Media Network production.